I'm doing good. Dealing with stuff. But, doing okay. So I didn't watch this movie. That's okay. Fig yeah, I figure I'll just listen in. That'll work. Learn something, maybe. <laughs> I did that for a discussion on a book called um, Lost in the Cosmos by Walker Percy. I didn't think I was going to get anything out of it, but I figured I'd just hang in there and listen to the discussion. And I got a ton out of it. It was a really good discussion. I know. I went back and read the book after afterwards, too. Yeah, I figure I'll watch the movie later on, but I think that's more of a movie I'm going to have to watch with Dad or something. We're a little bit more strict about what we watch. Um, try not to watch, you know, movies with a lot of cussing in it, at least. There is some of that in this movie, too. Okay. Just a warning. Is there anything else, maybe? Actually. Okay. He's got any plans for the weekend? Hmm. Um, our cousins are coming and we're celebrating our, uh, my granddad's, um, birthday. It was actually a day, but we're going to celebrate it on the weekend. They're, they're coming from Mississippi down to Florida. And then we might go to the beach. Nice. We only live about, I don't know, 40 minutes away from the beach. That's Good cool. waves too, yeah. Is it just going to be us tonight, or...? We will find out. I say we give it two minutes, and they'll be like, okay. maybe do prayer? If we have a shorter study, then we have a shorter study. Sounds good. If I have to switch over to my phone, I will. Okie dokie. How is King Steve a council member, a server admin, and a registered? <laughs> He's a car. He's, He's a, a car. car, exactly. Yeah, that's why yep. he does it, because he likes the fact that it spells car. Can he give himself those permissions? He's the type. They can do whatever he wants. Uh, 
Yeah, he's got access to just about stop him, we couldn't. <laughs> he could ban the entire council. Mm. Not that he would, but he could. I don't think he would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he could, like you said. Yes. That's why we're really careful about who we give that kind of power to. Nah, I think we just give it out kind of willy-nilly. <laughs> I don't think we need to direct really bad people or anything. Right. We don't want to be too judgmental on council, so that's the important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Judge <laughs> well, I mean, hey, Aaron, Aaron, they gave you council. There you go, yeah. there you go, see? That's, that's, that's like... why you brought you on, Aaron. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Could hermeneutics like that, that's what we brought you on. <laughs> they, it's because they knew that I don't know how to work any of that stuff anyway. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I just got a K-Bar knife. I wish that Rigney was around to help me figure out how to take care of it. Because Rigney is our knife guy. I haven't seen Rigney in a while. I guess he started school again, didn't he? I think he's on his trip, isn't he? Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's right. on a big trip. Oh, I forgot about his trip, yeah. Like a really long trip. <laughs> like over a hundred days trip. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe, I think it was like, I think it might be over a hundred days. Might be, yeah. I think it is because I saw him off. He was offline for 40 days, went online, then offline for 50 or something. So maybe 90. I don't know. All right. Let's do this. All right. Prayer request. Traveling for family, if you want to sum it up. The expanded version is um, cousins are coming from Mississippi, going to Georgia, and from Georgia to Florida, uh, down here. So, and then my dad's coming from Georgia, where he works right now, coming down um, here this weekend. So, a lot of travel going on. How about you, Erander? Um, just pray for work. It's getting a little stressful. Nothing I can't handle, but I could use it. Sales? Stressful? Lies. Yeah. <laughs> well, the funny <laughs> thing is that it's the, it's like the interpersonal stuff that's more stressful than the actual job. Because in what I'm doing right now, there's a little more people management than I thought there would be. <laughs> so that's interesting. That can be troublesome, to say the least. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let me pray for that. Are the council meeting goes well? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to miss that. I might be out of town, but I'll try to, try to get on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> they probably have better speed <laughs> on there anyway. Council meeting, nice. Good. <laughs> so, nice. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll try to hold off the dogs so that we don't, you know put you on inactive council or under. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I'm like, oh, it's my first one and I'm going to miss it. Man. <clears throat> but we got a young adult thing with our church, so I figured that was important let's, too. Let's go. We're losing your packets right. again. Okay. There we go. Gotta shut down all your torrents and your movie downloaders in the background there. <laughs> Sorry, I shut down my torrents, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my packet loss is so high. I'm downloading 29 movies. Troy, join your channel. <laughs> Let's pray for Troy. I mean, hey, Troy. What? Huh? 
talking about my stressful week coming up. Yeah. No, I wasn't yet. Prepare for Troy's uh, special week. Special <sighs> week. Oh my gosh, that's special literally week. what it is. Oh, because of your training, training people. Yeah, we're training next week. We're training two people. Um, don't ask why two. Um, apparently, maybe that's how many it takes to take my job. Kidding. Um, <laughs> and then plus working UPS on top of them. And then starting the following week, I will be working first shift UPS to do training. I'll be working like eight p or ten p.m. till five p.m. or eight ten a.m. to five p.m. Uh, for hazmat slash OSHA training. Um, after that, I'm hoping to go ahead and I haven't talked to my boss yet about this, but instead of leaving the company, I'm thinking about just reducing significantly the total number of hours I'm working, like down to eight, um, and be a dedicated flex. Plus, uh, when people go on vacation, I schedule in vacation time to cover. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm looking at proposing to Securitas, which is the company I currently work for. So we'll see how that goes. So I'll still be working for jobs in that case, but I won't be working for jobs with a full time and everything else. But anyways, I have no we'll idea what you guys were talking <laughs> about before me. We are taking prayer requests, so it works. Yeah. Yep. That's a beautiful sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can thank GoPro for that. GoPro, should... yes. GoPro yep. Bible study. Do it. <laughs> GoPro Bible study. Where is my the GoPro? The most GoPro video of all time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. The ouch. You're calling your own so poor. That hurts. Oh, I just gets quiet. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, let's take let's take this prayer request before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to gather together and uh, discuss your word and how it applies to things in media. Pray that you'll be uh, with Ben as he has all this family traveling this weekend. Um, I pray that my packet loss that will stay down. I pray that uh, um, you'll be with Air Anders, uh job uh, him, with him with his uh, job this week and just help him to manage the uh the interpersonal conflict there give him wisdom what well to say and how to deal with it to uh, be with troy with his uh special week as well <laughs> his uh it sounds like there's a lot of stress going on at um the job with some big decisions to be made uh, i pray that you'll uh, those uh decisions uh wisely give his co-workers Uh, him and his co-worker uh, wisdom and in Jesus name I pray amen 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 okay it's phone time phone okay. time oh yeah uh huh enough messing around it's... hang on <laughs> time pretty, to get serious pretty sad when your phone has better internet connection than your desktop <laughs> yes you're yeah. telling me Concorp disconnected from your channel and Ouch. Bye -bye. now we're running it. So <laughs> <laughs> I vote for I don't know. I don't even know. So Aaron, one being uh, good, uh, ten being bad. I think it's supposed to be the other way around, but whatever. Um, how would you rate that movie you watched? Um. So let me. I'll I'll rate it the other way around. One being terrible, ten okay. being bad, because I think better that way. Um, I would say maybe <laughs> like a seven or an eight. 
pretty good. All right. Definitely not. It's not, and I'm sure we'll talk about this. It's not a Christian movie, and that's yep. that's kind of the interesting thing, is that you can learn stuff from it. it's not necessarily a Christian movie. At least not in the way that we traditionally think of Christian movies. Encore phone, join your channel. Encore phone. Welcome back. Okay. I'm back. Much better. How do I sound? Do I sound pretty bad? No, you sound a lot better. You sound better. actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> you sound a lot better than you do on your desktop. <laughs> I just gotta find a way to pull up my notes. Ooh. When the internet's so slow, your notes won't load. That's a sign. The struggle is real. I just saw my ticket again, and I'm like, oh, I got a ticket that's taken care of. You got a ticket? How did you get a ticket? He's like, you mean 81? 81? 81 A65. <laughs> That'll do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. we're, we're set. Okay, so, Ben hasn't seen the movie, Erander has seen the movie. Troy, did you see Believe Me? Nope. I thought about writing it, watching it yesterday, and then you text me going, "Hey, you want to play?" Uh... Ah, see, you should have told me we could watch it again. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, anyway, the, um, we can still do this though because this is what I have for notes. So, <laughs> yeah, um, there is this movie that you guys. May have seen the trailer for at least. Um, Aaron, did you want to summarize kind of the premise of the movie? Summarize sure. the movie. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Okay. So basically, um, it is this college student. Um, he wants to go to law school, and he's in his last semester, I believe, of college, and um, is not allowed to graduate and move on to his law school until he pays his bill, which I've been there, so I understand. <laughs> um, and so throughout a couple of things, he uh, he ends up going to church with a group of his friends, and uh, there's a missions group there, and they're raising funds to go out on mission. And so he sees the offering plate being passed by, and it's just, you know, full of money, and he gets an idea. And... He decides that he's going to start um, his own charity, but he's going to keep the money for himself. Um, and it gets a little more complicated from there. He starts going on tour, him and his friends, with this other Christian organization, and they start skimming money off the top. Like, they'll take the cash and, and leave the um, checks and everything for the actual charity. And so that's pretty much it. Like, he's essentially stealing from <laughs> from this charitable organization that panders to christians it's it's like a, a christian a christian organization so it's not just like a, a charity in itself but um throughout that they have to to try to blend in they have to try to learn how to act like christians which i think is the funniest part of the whole movie um and that's the part you see like in the trailer where they kind of break it down into how to act like a christian and get away with it and in the end they learn a good lesson i think without spoiling everything. So I take it they get caught? Yes. And in exactly the way I thought he was going to get caught, too. <laughs> Saw it coming a mile away. I won't spoil that part in case anybody wants to go watch it. But 
There is a part um, there to that that I do want to talk about, so I will spoil one part. Okay. Uh, the, he does get caught, um, and like he gets caught in a way that you expect, but the part that you don't expect is how the Christians in the ministry respond when he gets caught. Mm -hmm. There's two guys. There's this worship leader um, who dresses like one of the Goo Goo, Goo Dolls. <laughs> 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 His name is Gabriel, and Not he responds Gabe. quite Gabriel. happily. Yeah, Gabe. Gabe. Yeah. Not, Gabe. Not Gabe. Only his friends call him Gabe. So right now, let's just stick so with Gabriel. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> He's an interesting character. Um, I have some questions about. Him. But um, so he responds quite quite pleased when Sam and his friends, the fraternity that's doing this, get caught. Um, and then the leader of the ministry that's taking them on tour responds immediately so so this gabe brings this the scam that sam and his friends are doing to the leader of the ministry and the leader of the ministry responds how how does he respond there under he um of course is worried that it's going to get out and that it's going to look bad on the ministry itself so essentially he keeps telling them that they're going to finish what they started they're going to keep touring with them and not say a word about it uh, because he's afraid of how that's going to affect people's faith. But really, I feel like he's more afraid of losing money and not not making as much of an impact as he wants to. Correct, because his goal throughout the film is to make cross-country this ministry that goes across the country and raises money for other ministries the number one most impactful ministry in the country. So he sees this 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 particular this theft as a threat to his ministry, and therefore tries to cover it up and say, "Well, we're just going to give the money back to my ministry, and we'll be even." Mm -hmm. so, the The message of this film is kind of tough to nail down. There's a couple different different themes to it. Uh, number one would be would be giving, which is why do we get what what do you think the, uh, the th there's a couple of things that that they talk about in regards to giving what what is the, the case that the the guys who are doing the scam make about why Christians give well the main guy he says that Christians give to make themselves feel good makes them feel better about themselves makes them feel better that they're doing they're, you know, they're having a hand in something good, and all they're doing then is supplying them with an outlet to, to you know, to feel happy, to feel better about themselves. So to him, he doesn't really think it matters where the money goes as long as Christians get to give. And he sees throughout, like there's this, there's this one scene at the end of the church, the first church service he goes to, where he goes up to the missionaries and asks them, like, hey, how much money did you raise? And, uh, and they say, uh, you know, X amount of dollars, and he's flabbergasted. And he's like, so what kind of, what are you guys held to? Like, what do you have to do now? Like, how do you, how do you, they make sure that you're not going to just run away with the money? And the lady was just. Accountability is the question asked. Accountability, yeah. right. Account what kind of accountability is there? Yeah. And she's just like, what do you mean? Like, we'll take pictures, I guess. And so he's just like. Okay, so really, people don't care where this money goes. They just want to feel like they're doing good. And I tend to agree with him a little bit, other than the point he makes towards the end of the movie, but um, that that it might be the, the reason why a lot of people do give. Maybe not everybody, though. Right, and there... I would actually classify... There's a couple different characters that I want to look at from this film. I would classify the crowd... Um, in the church as a character because the crowd reacts several times to how to these guys because they go up on stage and they, they have a worship service and then they have kind of a presentation about their ministry and this this main character the sam guy comes up and gives a um a, a sermon so they, they do this the first time and the the sam guy when, he, when he's talking he uh, he starts he starts messing up. He starts saying some things that are doctrinally unsound, like you know Jesus didn't really walk on water, and that's not really important. 
And the crowd starts getting all agitated. And the, the crowd starts, because the crowd, knowing their Bibles, knows that this isn't true and that they're, they're starting to question this, right? So they're starting to question, is this guy a phony and this what is going on here? And as this is happening, they have another guy in the sound booth, okay? And the sound booth guy realizes what's going on. And he saves the day by giving some ambient guitar, by doing the mood letting right. And then the, the guy on stage realizes what's happening and switches over to an emotional appeal to give. He says, essentially, that, that you know, what's the important thing is that we, we give and we help people. And in, in quote this, because it's said throughout, several times throughout the film, give in, a, give in a way that reflects the faith you claim. So he appeals to emotion and to guilt to give them, to, to get them to give. And of course, you know, from what you can tell from the trailers, the crowd immediately responds with, you know, oh, that's so great, and they start giving. So, and throughout the film, this happens several times. There are several characters. Callie starts is one of the one of the characters who'd actually been to the area that they're supposedly doing this charity work in. Um, and she sees problems with them and starts to ask questions. And they again make the same uh, pseudo-spiritual emotional appeal. Uh, and then she stops asking questions. And the leader of this ministry, this Ken, the guy who heads up the cross country, eventually tries to cover the thing up. Same thing, starts asking questions. Well, tell me more specifically about your work in Lesotho. And the Sam character goes, you know, oh, you know, I would really say it's the Lord's work when you really get down to it. And dodges the question that way. And everybody's like, oh, amen, amen. Asking further questions. Mm -hmm. So there's this idea that, that, you know, the content isn't as important that as the emotion for the crowd and for the people giving and for the people even in the ministry so that's that's we can talk about that later if that's a valid criticism or not but that is a criticism in the message of the movie towards the church another big theme is honesty is it right to lie to make people feel good um the characters go back and forth on this the main character sam uses the story about um, about how professor math that Al failed a math, his first math course to kind of inspire them to do better and to not, not be discouraged. Well, it's it's obviously not true. It's a lie. And so, but, but the, the main character uses it to say, you know, it's not about if what we're saying is true or not. It's about giving people hope and giving them something to look at. And one of the, the, the Christian character, arguably the one in the movie, Gum, comes back at him eventually on this and says, because he, he, te he, he tells the story several times throughout the movie to, to justify his actions. And he eventually starts to tell this, this story to this, this character at the end, this, uh, this Cali character, and she goes, it's a, she goes, yes, it's a lie, it's a stupid story. She goes, it's, it's, not, it's not how you feel, it's what is, how you feel about your belief. It's, is your belief true or not that makes a difference? So what you believe in is what matters. So if you go up there and you get people to believe in God, if you get people to believe in you and to go along with it, instead of ha instead of honest with them and helping God, but if you if you aren't a Christian, you go up there and you chip out God, just to kind of fake it through and to help to make to kind of sell yourself to these people, then you're doing the wrong thing. You're gonna want to you know, have setting yourself up for failure, setting them up for failure. It's about what what your belief is in. So that that's a big theme of the movie is. Is belief intrinsically good, or is what the belief in important? Um, kind of ironically on this, I think it's a great artistic part of this movie. Um, this guy, the Sam guy, he kind of lies his way through sermons and does really, really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throughout the movie. <laughs> Especially towards the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got really some pretty good, good lines. Yeah. Um, but, and so he's really really good at giving these sermons near the end. And when he finally approaches the Bible honestly at the end, his last sermon, he approaches it honestly. And he, he talks about the, the story. And all of a sudden, he's not polished. He's not deep. But he's very real and he struggles with it. He's not really sure what the, what the story, because he knows it calls for action. Uh, but it's a difficult action. So he gets he gets quiet and he gets emotional. And he gets to be a lot less polished because he's approaching it authentically, and he's really the, the the time when he actually honestly approaches the Bible. He doesn't have it put together in little sound bites. 
is something that's difficult for him to get through. Difficult for him to understand. Which I think is a great part of the movie. Um, so that so honesty and um, genuineness is a big part of the movie. Obviously, the Sam guy and his guys are disingenuous. Not authentic, dishonest. But many of the Christians are too. Uh, in fact, Gabriel is the, the worship leader. Gabriel, not Gabe. Hmm. Let's call him Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep it Gabriel. <laughs> Gabriel has this incredible, incredible part of the movie where he's up on stage and the the slide behind him <laughs> has uh, has the worship music on it. And the worship music is, it's four lines of Jesus. <laughs> and that says, <laughs> says, repeat six times. Six, bottom of the slide. I think it said X16, <laughs> like it was 16 yeah, X16, times. that's what it was, yep. <laughs> oh, it cracked me up. And then, it, says, it says, copyright Gabriel in the bottom right hand corner, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I'm 16. <laughs> if you've ever been in a church that uses those slides too, that's even funnier. Oh. Yes. It's 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 funny because it's true. Yep. And what's great about it is he has this he, they asked him about it at the dinner dinner party afterwards. And and he goes, he goes, you know, I was just thinking, if the song's supposed to be about Jesus, what are all those other words doing in there? <laughs> it's, it's sad because like I we, we worked with Christian artists. I was part of a a Christian a, a literary magazine was in college, and Christian artists are just they, they oftentimes use these spiritual cop outs to kind of kind of dodge actually doing good art. Yeah. And that's that's exactly the kind of line that a Christian poet that we would reject would use with us. <sighs> but yeah, yeah. So there are parts of the movie that I really like. <laughs> yeah. The the whole, the whole, sorry, the whole thing with Gabriel is kind of funny when you look at the movie as a whole because he is, not that he's disingenuous because I think he's got a good heart, but he's so caught up on how he looks and how he performs and the fact that he's this starving artist for God and he's this hipster and he does things a certain way and... And that's exactly what the other guys were trying to do. <laughs> they're trying to be the Christian hipsters. They were trying to be, they were trying to act like they were bigger Christians than they were. And like you almost got this weird dichotomy between the two, the people who are in the non-Christians and then Gabriel who is, you know, kind of the same as they are, if that makes sense. That's actually exactly what I have written down for my next bullet point. Nice. <laughs> is the, the comparison between Sam, who's the leader of this fraternity who's scamming everybody, and Gabriel. Um, number one, you'll know, definitely focused on appearances. Um, I would argue that Gabriel is disingenuous. Yeah. Uh, and, and here's why. Um, there's, there's, there's a couple scenes where he's... He, he talks to people, and if he's not the center of attention, he kind of blows them off. He goes on his iPhone, or he takes other calls, or different things, just so he doesn't just shows that he doesn't actually care about them, even though he he puts on the Christian demeanor of "I'll, I'll pray for you." And the other one is this great passive-aggressive prayer he has with Sam, <laughs> yeah, when he's convinced that Sam's trying to take his girlfriend. Um, and Sam actually says to him, "Hey, do we like need to talk? Is there is everything good between us?" And Gabriel's like, "No, no, no, we're good. I'll just be praying for you, man." <laughs> so it's this this kind of dodging, you know, conflict resolution in by 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 doing prayer requests and by by praying for the person passive aggressive, um, but by not wanting to come across as you know angry at them because that would not look look as good. So I would say that they're both both disingenuous. They're both focused on appearance. Um, they're both quite selfish. Um, and this obviously it makes it makes perfect sense for for Sam why he's selfish but gabriel as well you know by the fact that he can't give people a time of day to talk to them if he get, takes a phone call or if he gets a text something like that um, but also just in how he is if he's not the center of attention or if he's if he's if he's um um uh, teased at all he can't take teasing he doesn't like jokes about himself he can't handle any of those things 
Uh, finally, uh, covetous. They're both covetous. They both are jealous of each other. Um, Sam is jealous of Gabe's girlfriend. Um, and is <laughs> attempts to steal her. And Gabe Gabriel is jealous of Sam's fans by his own admittance. Gabriel says, you have all the fans and it's wrong. And what's interesting is that at that point, um, Sam has begun to question if the fans are worth it. But Gabriel is jealous of those fans. So they're an interesting dichotomy. Uh, they, they both are, they don't, you know, on, on the surface level, they seem quite different. You know, Gabriel being the hipster Christian, Sam being the guy who's a conman. But in reality, they're, they're quite similar. Their, their motivations are the same. Which one did you like more and relate to more, Erander? Um, honestly, <laughs> probably, well, I don't know. See, that's hard. I want to say Sam, but that might yeah. be the pridefulness in me because I still kind of feel like there's bits of, there's bits of Gabriel in, in me where it's kind of like, I don't necessarily want to be popular, but sometimes you want to be looked as, as, I want to be the cool Christian, you know, I'll be the guy who wears the hipster clothes. I want to be the guy who, you know, is everybody's looking at like, oh, he's so close to Christ and, you know, he's great. And so I, I would say that I liked Sam more as a person <laughs> because I know people who are like Gabriel and I don't really like them as people. So that's probably not a good thing for a Christian to say, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of the, the whole <laughs> sounds of the movie in a nutshell. Yeah. Kind of, you know, this is not a really good thing for a Christian to say, but there it is. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> no, I, I agree. I looked at this and I said, well, if they're so similar, which one do I like more? And I, I liked Sam on an emotional level. I root, I root for Sam throughout the movie. I look at that later and it's like, well, that's not, is that the right thing or is it not the right thing? I got thinking about this, got to comparing them, got to kind of drawing it out. I think the reason why we like well, the audience like Sam instead of Gabriel is, in a sense, even though Sam's lying the entire time, he is almost more authentic than Gabriel. Um, because he's not so not so fake, not so passive aggressive. But more than that, more than that, Sam knows what he's doing is wrong. Um, and he 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 struggles Welcome with it. Welcome to your modern office. It's always been connected to your Troy. computer, but now it's also. <laughs> you did. <laughs> we all have right. a modern office. I love Great. modern offices. <laughs> Especially when they welcome you. Right. Yeah. The, let's say the, the thing we like about the thing that we Gabriel though is that Gabriel doesn't see that he's wrong, and Gabriel sees himself as the martyr, even though he's the one, even though he's every bit as wrong as Sam, arguably. In regards to his heart and tension. So you look at this, and what story does that remind you of? Hmm. Is there a parable that could relate to this? The one I'm thinking of would be the prodigal son narrative. Oh, with, you have the, two guys. with his brother? Yeah, yep, okay. with his brother. Yeah. And one being more jealous than the other, or jealous of the other one? Yep. Because one thing uh, is remember... a great guy, and the other one is the prodigal son, yeah. Right. When the older brother is every bit as selfish as the younger, hmm. he just doesn't leave. But he serves for the wrong reasons. He serves to serve himself. He serves so that the dad will bless him more. So, but their motivations are the same. The difference is the one, the older brother, he is, first of all, extremely judgmental of the younger brother. And secondly, can't see his own fault. Uh, there's a great book on this called The Prodigal God by Timothy Keller. It's one of the best um, devotion books I've read. Uh, but that's the case that Keller makes about. Keller makes the case that the, that the, the true bad guy in the story bad guy. Sinner in the story is the older brother. The younger brother is certainly a sinner. The older brother doesn't see that he's a sinner when the younger brother can't at least see that he's a sinner. 
So in a sense, it's, it's kind of a modern, that, that part of the story is a modern retelling of the, uh, the Prodigal Son narrative. Um, it's, it's, it's a good way to, because um, I, I felt the same way, Andrew. I liked Sam more, but then I felt kind of convicted by Gabriel because I go, geez, like, <laughs> am I that hipster Christian guy who, like, mm -hmm. you know, does the passive-aggressive thing, wants to be liked, wants to be thought as godly? But doesn't want to be thought of as traditionally godly. He wants to be thought of as kind of hip. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then, you know, you look at that, uh, and the other one is obviously you know Ken, who gets his his identity wrapped up in his ministry. Can't do the right thing because uh, uh, you know, he's he's so worried about his quote unquote ministry. So much so that he'll justify sin, justify embezzlement for his own purposes, to uh, um, to kind of protect the ministry and, and 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 the truth. So everybody, so he's covering up things too. He's disingenuous as well. He's just trying to cover it up for what he sees as cleaned up reasons. Let's see, then we got the crowd. Talked about that some. So, question then: Which one of those characters are we supposed to relate to as the? Uh, as the viewer. I think the way they made the movie, we're supposed to like Sam. <clears throat> I think that's how they made it. I think the way it was presented as a whole, as a package, kind of was... Because on the surface, you, you kind of get this idea that maybe they're not really making fun of Christians, but they're trying to make it seem like, well, Christians aren't that great. But actually, in the end of the movie, you kind of ha you come away with a completely different idea. Um, in fact, almost the opposite of that. That, yes, there are bad Christians, just like there are bad, normal people. You know, people are people. So I think they wanted you to kind of empathize with Sam a little bit. But then at a certain point when he makes his turn, it's just kind of this moment where you're like, oh. And I would really like to see what a non-Christian watching this movie gets away with, like, takes away with it. Um, I might even have one of my friends watch it just to see what they think about it. Yeah. It's interesting. I felt, felt myself relating to each character different point of the movie at a different level mm -hmm. and then what's great is you know you have your you know sam has to end with his decision and you kind of feel like you you have to face the same decision at the end am i going to be am i going to be am i going to serve for the right reasons will i be willing to give up everything you know the fame the 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 quote-unquote ministry for the sake of honestly following after christ And that's, you know, it's, I think that's definitely a, a good moral, a good message at the end. Yeah. I think they do a great job of, of making the characters believable and relatable. I think, I think another one of the messages, too, is the fact that this isn't a Christian movie. You can take the, the ending message and apply it to wherever you are. So if you are a Christian watching this, I think the message is be genuine. Make sure that whatever you're doing, you are, you are doing it for the right reasons and you're not being... You're not self-serving. That you're actually wanting wanting to help people, like like the uh, the girl was there. And then, yeah. um, if you're a non-Christian, don't understand that not all Christians are are bad. But you have to make the decision for yourself for the right reasons as well. So if you make the decision to not be a Christian, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, not be out of hatred or misconceptions about Christianity or whatever, you have to make that decision for yourself in the in the right way. Right, and that's what Sam and his guys right realize one by one, is that regardless of the motivation of the other people in the ministry or the motivation of the crowd, they're going to have to stand before God and they're going to have to realize that, th that they're held accountable for their decision to deceive. Regardless of everybody else's being Willfully deceived or not, it's about what they realize. What they kind of realize that what they're doing is wrong. 
and that it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks or does or why everybody else does what they do. What matters is how are they going to respond now? Are they going to turn away from this? Or are they going to proceed with it and deal with the consequences? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what's kind of great about the movie is the movie kind of starts out as like, it starts out as very much a pro-hipster Christian movie and then it turns on Christian hipsters and then it turns on the people who are critical of Christians. So it kind of baits you in and then and then turns on you a little bit and makes makes you realize that you have a call to action, not just to sit back and laugh at everybody else. So, on an aesthetic level, is this film good art? Hmm. I think so in the in the fact that it makes you think, and I, I feel like that's, to me, that's what art is, is that it makes you think and maybe even maybe even a conception that you had beforehand kind of changing that a little bit maybe not changing your mind i'm not sure if many people are going to be like saved because of it but definitely make you think a little bit differently about about it in the end yeah it's a tough question it's a question that you could spend nights and nights and nights on what is art Art, I would say, is something that's engaging, beautiful, and I agree, makes you think. Challenges your preconceptions. I think it's definitely much... It's the best Christian movie I've seen. The best movie from the Christian film industry, I should say. I would say this is the only one that I would eventually classify <laughs> as good art that I've seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> no offense to, to Fireproof or Courageous. <laughs> but Courageous was pretty horrendous when it comes to a, a technical level. Now, some people, I, 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 took, I said that in college, I took a bunch of flack. Um, they said, well, you can't criticize, it's, it's a Christian movie, has a good moral. Okay, but Christians are the ones who should have the best artistic level as well because our imagination has been redeemed. So, Narnia is good because it's, not just because it's Christian, but also because it's good art. It's an entertaining story. It's a good, engaging story. Narnia is Lord of the Rings are at a much different level than Courageous or Facing the Giants. Now, this isn't a Narnia, this isn't a Lord of the Rings, but it is a movie that is engaging, that is pretty well acted. Um, and it's, it's a movie that doesn't preach at you. Art can have a message, but it shouldn't be didactic shouldn't be sit there and just uh, you know go through the points one by one by one this movie doesn't preach at you it, it, it more asks questions so I would say yes to this and that that ending yeah. too yeah. not to I'm not gonna give it away but like where he real he realizes something in that last second before credits roll and you're just like wait what did he realize and you had to really think yeah. like Oh, okay. It's kind of like the end of Inception where you're like, did it stop? It felt like it was wobbling. And then you have to like make your own mind up. Okay, yeah, it wobbled, so it was going to stop. Or you have to believe, no, just because it wobbled, it didn't, you know, he really is in the dream world or whatever, you know. Yeah. So what did yeah, he no, realize? Good question. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Anger? It's a tough call. I think... I, I think... Well, I, I hesitate to give it away. Yeah. It's fine. Give it away. <laughs> I, I, I think that that's the moment when he becomes redeemed, but you could go, you could go either way. You could argue that he made he found a way out of it without actually repenting. Why he's smiling. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like he had an idea, a way to get out of this whole mess that he's created. Yeah. It was kind of like uh, when he okay. was he was given like a final speech, final message, and during that he had a plan in motion to like 
do what was right with the money. And the way he did it was kind of underneath the the main uh, the main uh, guy's nose. So he was doing like the right thing, but you could also you could also say that he did it deceitfully, and maybe he was kind of like, "Hey, look at me," or he was like, "I kind of understand this now. Like, I understand why people give." And I think that's what the girl taught him because that was around the time when when she kind of turned him around. By he was he was trying to give her the same spiel like, "Hey." I just give people an avenue to give because that's all people want. They just want to give. And she's like, no, some people actually want to help. And that's when he realized that not all Christians just want the emotional high of giving. Yeah. And then when he essentially kind of gave back the money that he took, he kind of was like, yeah, it feels good, but also I know it was the right thing. And I think that's in the end when he kind of smiled a little bit. That's what I took away from it after I thought about it. And that's it for what I would agree with. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, that's what lines up with his actions. And interestingly, he is talking about the story of the rich young ruler when he's, when he's mm -hmm. struggling with this. He, go, he goes, you know, the guy went away sad because he had, he had many things to give up to follow Jesus. And that's the situation that Sam's in at this point. So, yeah, I agree. I yeah. think that that was. And he was able to give it. He was able to give it where the rich man couldn't. He was able to give it. And then he was also able to be happy about it. And I think that's why he smiled in the end. So, I mean, I think you could make a pretty strong case towards like that was a, redempt a redemption moment kind of thing. Maybe not a salvation moment, but maybe a a start down the right path where he realized exactly why people did what they did. Yeah. Yep. And it's really, really subtle, but that's what makes it good. Yeah, it really is. So is this movie a good movie for Christians, for the church? Now are we saying to play in a church? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> I think this is an awesome movie for... I have a friend at church who, before I watched it, I asked him if he'd seen it, and he was like, no, but I want to see that. I think it's perfect for, like, your little group or something or your friends. Yeah. Um, I think the criticism of the church is a little too biting for, for most people to swallow. I think even the trailer probably turned off a lot of people. Um, yeah. But there was nothing in it that I... That, portrayed Christians in a light that was untrue. And I think that's yep. what got me. So I think in for Christians of the quote unquote church, not necessarily in the physical building, I think it's great. Um, it definitely has, its, it's definitely an adult film. I don't think I'd let kids see it just because of some of the cursing and stuff and some of the subject matter. But yeah, I mean, I think it's perfect for the type of environment like we're here in now where you can get together like as soon as you watch it and talk about it and and work it through and not let anybody think that you know we're approving of anybody's actions you know right i also think we're kind of as christians <laughs> i think we're kind of a little too scared of being real and being yes. getting dirty and yep. not that we have to like watch really dirty stuff but the one thing that kept getting me about this movie is the fact that it didn't feel like a christian movie and yep. i was actually really uh, attracted to that and i was like this it's refreshing like i like to see the fact that there's something that's going to make me think but isn't horribly acted and isn't like you said isn't too preachy um but was real it's like i could totally see someone who is desperate for money wanting to to skim off of the offering plates because look at all that extra money that's, you know, going to Africa or somewhere that, you know, I need it too. I'm in need. So I could see people yeah. doing that and it felt really real. And I've seen a lot of Christian movies in my days and they just don't feel as real as this movie felt. Well, and part of that with Christian movies is because they clean it up so much that the, that the non-Christian characters feel cartoonish I actually feel yep. bad and then and they, the christian characters sorry go ahead i'm so so unbelievably the white knights that they're unrealistically mm -hmm. good yeah they give them they give the uh 
you know, the, the bad guys in the movie, they're like cartoon villains where they're like twirling their mustache. I am evil. Whereas real true, like sin and evil is a lot less, is a lot more subtle than, than we think it is. And it creeps in and it's slow and you can, it, you can see it in places where you wouldn't normally think you would like in a worship leader or in a guy who's running a charity organization. Yeah. Whereas, you know, they maybe weren't straight up like evil, but there was definitely sin there. And that's how the real world works, you know? That's how the book of Samuel works. I mean, look at what we've been studying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have you have Saul, who starts out as kind of a good guy and makes a series of decisions that lead him farther and farther away from God. Um, and he's, you know, these are serious decisions, like, you know, trying to murder David and murdering priests, <laughs> witch, witchcraft. Yeah. And you have David, who's the quote-unquote good guy, who has an affair, his friend, and then murders his friend to cover it up, who goes over and serves in the army of the enemy of, of Israel. So it's a lot, it's a lot messier, a lot uh, more realistic, the book of Samuel, than most Christian movies. <laughs> And that's been kind of my problem with a lot of Christian media is that not, I understand that their, their heart's in the right place, that they want to do what's right. But I think that, that by, by being disingenuous, by being cartoony, they wind up doing more harm than good. Um, and I think that's the really strength of the movie is that without being like over the top gratuitous in sin, it does have, it does portray it in a way where, you know, these guys are not good guys. Well, they do bad things. Mm -hmm. It's it's more realistic. And like I said, you don't you don't feel like you're watching a Christian movie. Yep. But it's not it's not nothing that you need to fast forward either. Right. It, I think they balance it really well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even the one scene where there is like all shot in slow motion, and it's like shoot like thirty seconds long, and like you don't even really see them like doing anything, but it portrays the idea so well that like. They're party animals, and you get it, and that's all you need, yeah. and they just move on, you know? So I think it's a yep. good balance between you don't necessarily have to show us everything, but you also don't need to sterilize it so much because we're not children. We understand that this stuff happens, you know? But, I mean, that's not to knock anybody yeah. who who wants to, you know, only watch things that are good and clean. That's not, you know, that's not a bad thing. But, right, absolutely not. Right, right. I think, I think that... Um, when you get into the real world and, you know, you start working and you start hanging out with other people, you find out real quick that life isn't like a Christian movie, unfortunately. And uh, things like this tend to start to relate to you more than, you know, the, the old Christian cartoons and, and, movie, and movies and whatnot. But, I mean, I The tricky thing about this movie... Sorry. Go ahead, sorry. No, it's fine, go ahead. I was going to say, the, the, the thing that I've encountered for objections, because I've watched this a couple times, a couple different groups of people. Um, and I actually watched it with them. My mom got all upset and thought that it was, at first, at first she thought it was terrible because it portrayed, she thought it portrayed Christians too harshly and that wouldn't be a good movie for non-Christians. Uh, which is not a thing that's unique to her. That came out in the forums quite a bit when we had this discussion. A lot of people said from the trailer that it makes too much fun of Christians and, and, and is too critical of the church. What do you think of that, Brander? Um, I think that the trailer does... I think... Yeah, it does kind of. But I think it appealed to me because I already have this type of sense of humor where I, I can easily laugh at, at myself. And I can laugh at the things that we do as Christians that are just ridiculous. Um, so I think you've got to approach it in that mindset that you kind of already have an idea that, you know, it's not necessarily wrong, some of this stuff we do. It's not wrong to have a song that says Jesus' name 64 times. I mean, that's not wrong. It's just silly. So I think if you approach it that way where you just, you got to be able to laugh at yourself and understand that, um, and really, when you see the movie as a whole package, you understand that it's not a hit at any one particular thing. It's I think there's this whole undercurrent, too, that we haven't really even touched on about how 
Christians just kind of flock to an idea or flock to a way of doing things, and then they don't ever change. And it's just like you you handshake the same way you you know give the good old Christian side hug and you do all this stuff that yeah. you now think is so incredibly important when really it's it's not as important as you think it is. So are they harsh on the church only in the in the sense that they make fun of the silly things we do? But when it came down to brass tacks about like the real things and the things that you know, trying to make a difference in the world and helping people, I don't think they made fun of Christians at all. In fact, I think they came off in a really good light, other than a few people. But I think the main character, the main Christian character that you were supposed to relate to, the girl, I think, um, I think came off in a fairly decent light. Yeah, what's great about that is, you know, even though she is the main Christian character, the one who really, like, authentic Christian faith comes through her the best. Even she has some lessons that she learns through this whole thing. Yeah. So everybody at the end of the story has learned some things. Everybody's changed. Um, but nobody's been unfairly slandered, I don't think. And yes, you have, you know, the leaders in the church. That was the thing that really bugged my mom, was that the leaders in the church, uh, in this ministry, the, the, the main leader was crooked. But, you know, I talked to her through, um, and eventually she came to understand that this is actually, she came to agree that this is a really good movie. But if you look at a lot of Jesus' parables, Jesus is quite critical of the religious crowd, especially the leaders. Um, because there's ones there that are in it for the wrong reasons. And Jesus acknowledges that. Uh, and and uh, often, you know, says that it's easier for the people who are outside to repent a lot of times than the people who are inside. And this is that kind of movie. It's a movie that's in the, in the vein of a lot of his parables, I think. Yeah, um, but I, I agree. I think that you that you're right. When it gets down to brass tacks, the movie definitely falls in the on the side of the church and in, in the side of not necessarily the church, but in Christianity, exactly. authentic Christianity, doing the right thing. Yeah, it falls um, it falls on the side of authenticity in general. Yes, and just like whatever you do, be authentic and don't be fake. Yep. Which I do think is a very good message of important message. So I liked it. Yeah. In fact, it's almost like the movie in itself, by being a not a, a movie that you wouldn't necessarily think is a Christian movie, was making that same statement. It's authentic. It's not trying to be anything that it's not. It just is what it is, and that's what you should be too. Yeah. Yep. No, it's true. That's what I had about. It. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, let me think. I think we pretty much hit everything. There's always like a, yeah. a few little things here and there. That I'm like, oh, that's good. There was a line that somebody said, and I was getting ready to write it down, and I I couldn't find a pen. And I, when I found one, I came back and I was like. I forgot what it was, and then I was like, I was so into the movie that I didn't want to stop and rewind it, so I think I probably need to watch it again, but there was, there was a line that somebody said that really hit me, and I was like, ooh, that's good, but I can't remember what it was now. I'll watch it again. Yeah, I took three pages of notes the second time I watched it. There's actually quite a bit in there. A lot of it's subtle, too. The, uh, by the way, the, there's a Christian clothing line in the movie called Cross Dressing. Oh, no. Which is like your epitome of hipster Christian clothing. Right. It's a real thing. Is it real? It's real. No way. Yes, you yeah. can get the t-shirt that says, I've been to Africa twice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, that, that whole thing was weird because, it, like, the ones that said F Satan was kind of like, really? <laughs> Does that actually exist? Like that shirt itself or just the, the line of clothing? They, they made that shirt and that line of clothing, yes. Wow. wow. It's an offshoot of the movie. Yeah. But part of the point, Ben, was that Christians like, they like swearing, but they don't swear. Yeah. 
so they'll abbreviate a lot of words. They have a t-shirt yeah. that says, Abstinence is bad A. Yeah, I, I know friends who do that, but, you know, I, I don't think that... If you go around doing that, that's not really great for your testimony. Yeah, that's kind of well. That's kind of what they were what they were saying was that was yep. that was actually pretty critical. Um, was they were yeah, saying was. like Christians don't swear, but they really like to swear. Like, and it's kind of like them saying you really, you guys, you really are still swearing, if you abbreviate it. So yeah, it was kind of a condemnation while while still trying to also make money off of Christians. Yeah. And it's not to say that we don't. I still think, oh, me included, a lot of people, Christians, uh, still, you know, swear in times of uh, frustration. Distress, um, yeah. yeah. stress and stuff like that. But, it, I mean, that's no excuse, but it happens, I think. I think that's just a constant battle with the flesh. What they were more criticizing, though, is like this, you know, the cleaning up it so you can use it flippantly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or even trendily, mm. which is... What do you mean cleaning up? Like, um... Like, like cleaning up by abbreviating or by spelling it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, he's, um... And he goes, he goes, the big, the big way I do it is, he goes, you can use it in a sermon as long as you preface it with... Now I'm probably going to get an email about this, but... Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so like, the, the being reluctant and the, the cleaning it up by abbreviating, it, it, they're essentially saying it's, it's just ridiculous and silly. Either... I think they... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I think they, they, they do draw out some good points from what I've heard. Things that are real. And things that Christians do need to work on. Yeah, I think so too. And now I really yeah. want to watch it, so <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. It's time for bed. <laughs> It'd be, it would be an interesting thing to watch with like your dad and get his input on it too, like, and like bring that to the forums too, and be like, so I watched this with my dad, and this is what he felt about it, like. You know, just to get that that separate opinion too. Yep. It's a good movie yeah, to, every... to start discussion. I think is is really what I'm I'm getting from it. We should do this more often with um. I, I don't. I guess. Not really. It doesn't have to be a Christian movie as long as it's something like this. It would be cool to do take a break from a Bible study every now and again. Because they're so draining. Oh yeah. <laughs> that oh. This guy, man. I tell you, this prattles on and on. <laughs> no, it is cool to see like what you learn apply to like something outside of the Bible because it puts another yeah. layer of realism on it. Absolutely. No, it's it's interesting you say that, Ben, because I do want to start doing this more often. We used to do this all the time in the honors program at college, and I really miss. It. So I, I think it's really applicable because it helps you to do not just watch what you see and accept it or reject it, but to think it through mm -hmm. and to say what's good about this, what's bad about this. I've always wanted to do like a book club. Which Who reads books anymore? Is it just me or, <laughs> or are things like of this nature generally more acceptable in a book form? Do you know what I mean? Like we're way more... Way more um, quick to, to read something that may not be, like, quote-unquote, Christian. But our movies, now those have to be, those have to come from Christian people, and those have to be Christian, you know. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that. I wonder why. Yeah, that's I really true. would. I mean, I know I read some books that if they put in, in movie form, I probably wouldn't go see the movie. Because I'm like, ooh, it, you know, if they had to depict yeah. that visually, maybe it's the whole visual thing. But if they had to depict that visually, that may not be something I would want to see. There are, there are books in the Bible where I think that of them. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. That would be crazy. If, if someone actually did it by the book, that would be... It would be cool, but it would be, be different. <laughs> yeah. 
Esther would be a very different, different movie. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> Son of Solomon. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> it's interesting, Aaron. Hey. We, authors have actually, I've, I've, I, uh, I've been able to talk to some different Christian authors, and that's what they've said the same thing. Um, uh, that it's more acceptable in print, and that certain things are more acceptable than others. So violence is more acceptable than sex. Violence is more acceptable than swearing in print a lot of times, too, they said. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's interesting because there, there is swearing and there is violence and there is sex in the Bible. But then when a Christian author tries to write it, even if they're doing it in a way that's not gratuitous, because if they're doing it in a way that's gratuitous, that's bad. Mm. But if they're, if they're doing it in a way that says that this is bad and it's the consequences of it, they'll still often take flack. Even if they say, and I, and I agree with them, that those types of stories are not for everyone. That's not like a, I'm going to stand up and read this in church sort of story. <laughs> um, <laughs> but even if they say that, still take criticism and say, you know, it should never be put to, to paper. But whatever. Yeah. No, I, like I, I think standard. it... <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, sounds like something somebody should make a movie about. <laughs> 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 no, I, I appreciate that input, though, Ben. I do think it's just something that we we should definitely look at, at doing more often. And it doesn't even need, necessarily have to be about Christian movies, like you said. It could be about movies, or it could be about uh, you know even just events or things. You know, yeah. taking the scriptures and applying it to the situations that we encounter. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, something I, I guess appropriate for a lot more people to watch, or something that people have watched before. Yeah, they yeah. can go back to, but not yep. necessarily a movie that you have to go see in theaters. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. overall, I think I've learned quite a bit from this. Well, really that's, like that's this. kind of good, and that's that's kind of the great thing about about this movie and movie. You know, it should be how we approach a lot of movies. Is not just you know to watch this and be entertained but to kind of to dig it apart the good movies good art allows you to dig it apart and to analyze it and to look at the different layers and then to grow from that even if you disagree with it because you can then say this is why I disagree with this but first you have to understand it alright well, you guys want to close it up in prayer I'll do it I will Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Eh? No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. No, go no, ahead. No, no, okay, I'll do it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day you've given us to be together and to just uh, talk about your word, and even in the context of something that um, isn't specifically the Bible, but Lord, we can see your hand in it, and you, we can see that you you speak to people, um, even in even through things like movies, you speak to us, and you speak to the people who wrote these things. And... Uh, we just pray that you would help us to rightly divide what we hear and to not take things as um, as we necessarily see them, but uh, take them apart and compare them to your word and uh, help us to just have that understanding. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.